morning and um, it really is early this morning. I'm heading out to uh, get some bits and pieces to repair my car. Uh, thankfully not Nissan Leaf, it's my uh, Mazda. Uh, the throttle in it's starting to stick. It's been getting worse and worse for a few months and um, Sarah nearly shot into a wall in her car park yesterday. Basically, you put your foot on the accelerator, it, it gets stuck, nothing happens, and then obviously you put more and more pressure on until it releases, and then you've got too much pressure and it shoots forward. So um, I've checked everything. There's um, Everything's working, running freely, so it must be in the throttle body that the um, carbon's built up. It's not unusual in old cars. It just, um, it just happens. Uh, I need to strip that down, clean it out, and um, get it working freely again. So that's the plan for this morning, so I'm off to get some cleaner now. And now for the moment of truth, perfect working throttle. Excellent, that's all it was. And it was absolutely disgusting in there. Um, what is this, 2005? So it's about 13 years old, this car. What, while I was changing or while I was cleaning out that throttle body, I was thinking a bit more about the cost of ownership. And in particular, the cost of ownership to new drivers. So when you pass your test and you get your first car, inevitably it's going to be uh, an older, cheaper to buy car because the insurance costs are high um, and you know, certainly for young people you haven't always got the money to run the thing but of course you, you want a car, you want your independence. So what I was thinking about is how much easier it's going to be, certainly in the future when the cost of EVs come down on the second hand market, they're already getting there but uh, you know like the original Leaf. Uh, the original Renault Zoe, there's some bargains to be had already, but that's just going to get better and better and better. If you were to buy one of those uh, original EVs as a first time driver, the chances are it would tickle the boxes for you because generally, uh, as a young person, you don't do hundreds of miles a day, you don't commute hundreds of miles a day. Uh, it is a case of running around, whether it's to college and back, you know, to the local town. Um, 80 miles is probably well within your daily range. I've also already kind of touched on the differences between um, the, the cost of servicing the cars. Uh, talking about all these little things that I have to do to my Mazda being an older car to keep it on the road. And um, you know, I've got a small amount of uh, mechanical know-how that I can do little jobs like that. Any more than that, I have to take it to a garage and it costs money. Well, as I've already explained, a lot of the components that I've had to fix over the last few months, they don't even exist on an EV, so it wouldn't have even been an issue. So there's another cost saving. But the biggest cost saving of all is to do with the fuel. Now I remember when I was uh, 17, had my first car, I had to limit myself as to where I could go because I physically could not afford to put the fuel in the car. And quite often you go with mates, everybody would chip in petrol money and that's how you afforded to get around. Well, you don't have that issue now with um, EVs because, let's be honest, if it was my kids with an EV, uh, they would be plugging it into uh, the charger on the wall at my house. I wouldn't be asking them for money for that because it's, it costs so little to charge up and it gives them so much independence it's, it's a cost that I would be happy to wear. Uh, and I'm sure most other parents would be the same. So that to me is a massive saving and that would make all the difference to a younger driver. And um, you know, especially with the insurance costs, what they are now, and the, the fuel costs, what they are now, and, and there's no sign of them coming down. They just seem to be going up week on week. And when we talk about insurance costs, you know, a lot of young people now they have to have these um, black boxes fitted just to get insurance uh, and that measures uh, their acceleration, the g-force, the speeds they're going at. Well, yes I know EVs are quite quick to accelerate but actually they're a much smoother drive and for me it has made me drive slower and smoother. Now I don't know if that's going to be the same for uh, a young person in their first car but I do find that because it is so quiet in this car, I'm happy just to kind of potter around. I don't feel the need to race around everywhere. Uh, yes, occasionally I will take Eco off and you know, we, I will make some progress. 
But if that transfers over to a young person as well, so you haven't got all the noise of the engine and the revving and everything, it, it does. It, certainly for me, it used to get me get the adrenaline pumping, and it was it was very exciting. And don't get me wrong, it it was great. But if you take that away, then perhaps people will drive a bit slower. And as a result, these black boxes they'll be recording uh, much calmer driving and that will help to reduce the insurance rates which um, has also got to be a good thing. Oh, actually while I'm talking about um, these cars being quiet uh, these tyres I've put on they are so much quieter than the old ones. Now I appreciate I've been running kind of a mismatch for the last couple of months so I've had brand new Goodyear's on the back the efficient grips and I've had uh, the original Dunlops on the front which were very worn out. Uh, having now got the Goodyear's put on the front to match the back, there is definitely a difference in the sound and um, it's, it's a lot quieter again. I, I don't know if it's any quieter than the Dunlops were when I originally had it or not, uh, it would be difficult to say, but it's definitely quieter than it has been for a long, long time. And um, yeah, for me, definitely worth that extra money. Well, I think I'm going to bring today's uh, video to an end. We've still got to go and see Father Christmas, still got to go and see my mum for dinner, so um, lots of family stuff, which uh, probably won't be very interesting for you. So I'm going to draw it to a close. Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I think I can probably do maybe one more of these videos before Christmas. Um, if for any reason I don't get one in, have a very, very happy Christmas, and I will definitely speak to you before the new year. Um, but um, thank you for watching. Take care.